Good evening. Welcome to Wonderfully Whole Conversations. This is a platform where we highlight men and women who are living a wonderfully whole lifestyle and also impacting their generation and generations to come by who they are, what they do, and their message. T tonight, I am very excited to, and honored to have Dr. Norbert Rainford, uh, my card I call him my cardiologist and my husband cardiologist. We have known him for a number of years, and I believe that God placed him in our lives so to prolong our lives. So welcome, Dr. Rainford. Thank you. I'm happy to have you on. And I know what we are sharing today could save someone's life. But before we go into our topic, and our topic tonight is matters of the heart. We know that this month is Heart Health Month, and we want to uh, address the cardiovascular system. But let me read Dr. Rainford's, just a portion of his bio. Dr. Norbert. Rainford, MD, is a clinical cardiologist who, who has enjoyed fulfilling parallel careers in both administrative and clinical medicine. Dr. Rainford is a graduate of Columbia University and New York University School of Medicine, a former assistant professor of medicine, Columbia University. He's a fellow of the American College of Cardiology, the American College of Physicians, a former member of the Board of Directors of the Association of Black Cardiologists, and an active member for the Institute for Functional Medicine. He practices right now currently at the Good Samaritan Hospital in Surfing, New York, and also an integrative medicine um, place address wellness in Valley Cottage. Uh, Dr. Rainford is married to his beautiful wife of, of 40 years, Winsome. This is uh, Dr. Rainford. I'm so excited about this conversation. Now, uh, we, we, we are addressing heart disease. We know that heart disease is the leading cause of death for men and women and people of most racial and ethnic groups in the United States. Statistics say one person every 37 seconds dies from cardiovascular disease in the United States. This is a big problem. And we must take preventative me measures to take care of our hearts. So uh, as we go into this, this discussion, I want to start, Dr. Rainford, by asking you to describe cardiovascular disease in a layman's term, because sometimes we think we know what it is, but we are coming to an expert to explain it to us so that we can understand. Okay, thank you very much, Judy. Um, I, I thank you. I'm honored to be here as well. And I, I'm just truly, truly thrilled to, for you to ask me to do this. Now, to, uh, to begin to try to answer that question, um, one of the things I try to do a lot to my patients is for, 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 for people to think of the, when you think of the cardiovascular system, just think of all these long tubes, arteries, veins, capillaries, and so forth, that run, all those things that run through the body. Uh, when you add them end to end, you get into Believe it or not, I'm not, I'm, I don't know what the most recent estimate is, but you get into thousands of miles. Believe that. Yes. So cardiovascular disease then, it's really, you know, when we think of it in a, in a very simple way, it's a heart as in cardiac disease and, and vascular as in the, affecting other areas that are subserved by, by distribution of, of the, or the, the running of, of these vessels. And the major one, of course, is is uh, is, is uh, the the brain. Uh, so you have uh, a car cardiac, yes, and cardiovascular. They think really of 
cardiac and the brain, and, and of course, other diseases affecting the arteries or the veins um, uh, throughout the body. So that, that in, in a certain sense, then it is, it is really that, that tree, that, that, those rivers, those, those long tubes cut, uh, packed together, I mean, end to end, that's the, the cardiovascular system. And, um, and it is interesting to note also that, and we, we will get into this on, on a heart attack, uh, what's the difference between a heart attack and a stroke? Well, guess what? They are exactly the same thing for the most part. Um, uh, the, the same thing that gives you a heart attack, the same disease process, is the same th that occurs in the brain. But the brain also has an, another uh, 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 pathology, and that is sometimes a breast vessel breaks, and you mm -hmm. can have a, 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 a bleed, so you can have hemorrhagic or a thrombotic stroke. But for the most part, it's it's, it's thrombotic. Um, so I I hope that you know in a, in a <laughs> that, sure. that is okay. The, the, what's cardiovascular disease is okay. Now, now, from my knowledge, lifestyle plays a major role, mm -hmm. and factors as obesity, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, physical inactivity, and chronic stress contribute to cardiovascular disease. Could you allow, please elaborate on these different factors and how people could avoid, you know, just change their lifestyle? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, um, just as I mentioned, um, where we use this, these these end-to-end these, uh, -end tubes, so to speak, um, Think no, and I, I want you to think in a very simple anatomic way, and then we get into it functionally. Uh, imagine every two, every every vessel. I'm going to give you end to end. If I give you this, um, you know, the, 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 the end to end, it's it's a it's a tube. Yes. Okay, and in the tube itself, so you have you have a sort of a musculature in the in the side and and the very in the very inside the tube there is a a lining known it's called the endothelium um that's where the disease process begins and and we've also uh, noted i mean discovered recently that there is it's not just it's it's this very thin uh uh uh, 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 uh very, very one cell thick uh uh Almost like a, a think of um, think of a uh, think of a of a of a of a um, an egg, mm -hmm. um, an egg that's that is a hard boiled egg, and you break it and you see that thing that holds it together. It's yes. almost like, that's like the, the endothelium. That it's that thin, and but now we we also know that it, there's also a, a covering of it, like a um, almost like a Velcro, let's call it glycocalyx. Now, disease itself in the cardiovascular system begins with the rupture of that Velcro uh, covering, and and, and 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 you'll hear this here over and over and over again. That bad cholesterol, the LDL, gets uh, it becomes oxidized. And it gets on between that inner lining into the wall itself, and then inflammation begins, and a host of things can can, can initiate that process. Mm -hmm. you know, there's no question. We know from what this uh, hypertension physically. If you think about it, it's called sheer. It's called sheer stress, but it's really it's really ripping up that carpet, so to speak. Um, but you also have. Uh, uh, metabolic problems like you know elevated cholesterol. I'm, I'm sorry, elevated glucose or sugar, um, and and when one has stress, for example, you know it's um, it's 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 more than just feeling stressed. Uh, there there are a whole host of physical things that that accompany that that feeling of stress. Um, uh, that's why you know, and you know, and I know you know this. <laughs> It shows that people who go to church are healthier than people who don't. Yes, because that one day a week of just uh, that one day of just sitting there meditating or what have you that relieves a lot of that sheer stress on that endothelium. Yes, it does. It does do that. Now, um, 
one of the things, so so we have those, the 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 the, uh, the risk factors you mentioned already, you, you talk about obesity, um, uh, inactivity, uh, bad eating, um, um, high blood pressure and so forth. But there, there's one that uh, that I, I, I know a lot of people have, uh, are not aware of. Um, actually, I, I, I became aware of it one, one and I'll, I'll say, I'll give the story. It was really one, one Wednesday evening, I was driving from a meeting I had in Long Island and I was listening to NPR and, uh, listen, and there was a TED talk and uh, there was this uh, uh, young um, uh, car, uh, pediatric uh, pediatrician who was talking about um, heart disease in, in, um, in the adults of, 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 of peer of, uh, who are, um, in terms of your background as kids. Mm. Really fascinating, that's really, really fascinating, is that um, there is now documented uh, adverse childhood in, uh, events, or ACE, has a very high correlation with future cardiovascular disease as well. So, you know, it's, 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 uh, th I think about it this, this way, it's more than actually physical thing that's happening to you. It's also, you know, we, when we talk about genetics, okay, but m far more important than, than genetics is really it's called epigenetics. Namely, what is it? How is this expressed? Does it turn something on? Does it turn it off? And there's no question that adverse events in childhood turn on these. these, these wow. Events. This is, this, this, this is good. I never heard about that. Yeah. So, so people, children who had traumatic events, are the higher risk of, of, of heart disease as adults. Wow. She is, she is, um, she's a, um, uh, she's now the, the, the director of, um, uh, it's, it's, she's in California, um, uh, the, the health department, director of health department of the state of California. Yes. Yeah. So she found that well, out? Uh, she, she did, she did much of, a lot of the, the, <clears throat> excuse me, what some of the, the foundational studies on that, but she knows it better than most people that I know of. That yes. Uh, uh, could you repeat her name again? I come back it before. Um, uh, I know her, 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 her last name, uh, it's Burke is her, she's, she's a married name, but she was, her, her maiden name is Burke. Oh, okay. Uh, or Kate, uh, that, 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 or that's good to know because, you know, even children who probably went through uh, in foster homes and things like that, and they grow up and they have heart disease, but this 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 is good good knowledge because we just know about the the, the basic of the obesity, the high blood pressure. But now you're saying from childhood trauma. And now, I, this, this, um, and by the way, um, what is also I was well, very very pleased to, to learn. <laughs> um, she she is Canadian. Yes, she was born in Canada, but her dad. Her parents are from Jamaica, and her dad was three classes ahead of me in high school. Mm -hmm. I, I, I want to remember her, her first. Yes, year. yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. So, so now, Dr. Rainford, we know at one time men were at, at a, a high risk for cardiovascular disease, but now women are catching up with men with cardiovascular disease. What are, what are some symptoms? You know, I, I know it is subtle in women. What are, what are the symptoms in women, the difference of the symptoms in women to men? Because sometimes in this cardiovascular disease, women don't think that they might be having a heart attack or something. Could you elaborate on this? Yeah. Okay. Uh, there, there are several features. There are several features to the to that question. Um, the first is that there is no question is that the reason why the world did not know that women had really had heart disease was that physicians before that in terms of the way, way they were trained were not looking for it. So if you don't look for it, you don't find it. But it was always there. So it's not, and that's number one. Number two, um, the anatomy is a little different in the sense that 
we have a, we have a term that's called obstructive um, uh, coronary artery disease and non-obstructive coronary artery disease. And it, it may sound as if um, if uh, if it's obstructive, it's worse. Yeah, maybe in some ways, but it does not mean that non-obstructive is, is not also serious. And that mean, and by that I mean is that obstructive, for example, again, we, we, we talk about our little hole there, mm -hmm. how, how much is encroached in. If it's 70% or more of that original diameter um, or circumference, I should say, it's called obstructive disease. And usually it's non-obstructive when it's about 50 or 55% or 40, you know, that kind of stuff. Now, women have a lot more non-obstructive disease, the first thing. Mm -hmm. And here's the problem is that you, if you do a standard stress test, most of the time you will not pick it up. Mm -hmm. So you don't know that you have it, but it's still lethal. Um, and you know, so that it it's something that that one should always be aware of. You know, do I you know always always think that it's not just the obstructive disease that's important? You know, when my my doctor said I did the stresses and I did fantastically well, blah blah blah, but it may still be there. Yes. Um, now, as far as symptoms go, <clears throat> the symptoms are atypical. It uh, typical. Typical symptoms mean, usually it's a man, crushing tightness in the chest, mm -hmm. uh, a feeling of impending doom, and goes to, uh, it goes to the, uh, radiates to your fingers and so forth. With women, much more, it can be just a sharp pain, it can be dizziness, it can be an ache in the jaw, it can be a headache, it can be anything. So mm -hmm. you have to, you have to look at the risk factors and think of it. Because if you don't think of it, you'll miss it. Wow. Now, personally, you're my cardiologist. And I noticed mm -hmm. when you send me for a blood test, it says so detailed, Dr. Rainford. I know it's about 20 pages. <laughs> <laughs> and I love what you do. You, you go through every, every uh, you know, section of it and you uh, and I notice it's green yellow and red just like it's <laughs> yes mm -hmm. and it, it, it's important uh, because one of the things that was pointed out when the my blood test there was something a lipoprotein A that I I used to be taking blood tests regular blood tests all the time but when you send me for this very detailed blood work, you picked up something that came, that genetically, yes. you know, I, I, and I love this because you mentioned something that people go to the doctor, they take a, a blood test and everything comes out, they, they, they seem all right. Their cholesterol is good. But then they they might have a uh, an issue. They 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 uh, they fall. They they pass out or something. But I like that blood test um, that you send Ken and I to take, and it is the you send it to the Cleveland. Yeah, it's the, yeah. It's the Cleveland clinic that designed that profile, and uh, it's available now at, at, at you know all Quest Labs. Yes. Uh, um, well, available, uh, but see, uh, I, my experience is that patients still have to make sure that the, the Quest staff knows how to process it because the processing is really key. Uh, but, but, to, but you mentioned the, the uh, lipoprotein, uh, we call it lipoprotein little a. Uh, that's all the phrase we use. Yes. Lipoprotein little a is, is, is really one of those LDL, it's a bad cholesterol. Yes. You, you will not see unless you specifically measure it. You won't see it. Wow. There are a couple of things about it. One, it is you inherit that. You really do. Mm. You know, is that, that's it's more. genetic. Yeah. Right. Uh, the other thing, too, is that lipoprotein little a 
knows only one thing it does. There's only one thing that it does. It's laid on plaques. That's all it does. So, you know, so that it's um, it's something that you have to be, you, once you find it, you have to be aggressive. Mm -hmm. um, they're different they're, through the years, <clears throat> through the years, the first thing that we used to use niacin. And yes. that's sort of halfway helpful, but that's still not that good. And it, and it, and it turned out also that, um, that in women, particularly in women, that women who ha are somewhat premenopausal women were somewhat protected because yes. estrogen seems to control its effect. Um, but it's, it's a very, that alone is a very good reason sometimes to consider doing uh, um, bioidentical hormone replacement. Yes, I think you mentioned that to me. Yeah. Yes. Um, um, but there, there, um, there are also some, you know, uh, there are some big guns that are available now. Uh, Repatha is one of these big guns called, it's a, it's a class called PCSK9. It's beyond statin mm -hmm. um, injection. That, that works very well in it. But it's wow. very, a brand new drug. And I, I always forget the name, so I wouldn't think about <laughs> Yes, yes. And it's available, I think, only on certain trials and so forth. That it's not oh, okay. So, so it could be addressed. Yeah. Now, in the chat, so, um, someone asked to comment on microvascular disease in women. Mm -hmm. Okay, I, I, um, I, I sort of hinted at that. Yes. In the, in the non-obstructive disease, so you have both. I mean, it's sort of the 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 the, the non-obstructive and micro microvascular are almost they're they're almost synonymous. Not exactly the same, but almost. Um, but there are smaller vessels that that seem to have less obstruction, but they're still pretty lethal because uh, in that particular part of the uh, of the cardiac circulation, the the, the backup pressure within the heart builds, whereas in, in you don't see that that much in the big, what we call epicardial vessels. So um, it, it's a, it, it is ex extremely prevalent in, in women. And there are, there, are, there are ways now of trying to document it. The, the, uh, the, the technology that I use is, is the MCG. Or the multifunction cardiogram. I use that, and that tells you whether or not non-obstructive disease is at play. Perhaps. Yes. Oh, this is good. This is good. Now, another question, Dr. Rainford. Those who are genetically prone to high blood pressure and high cholesterol, is there a way or ways to be heart healthy without taking some of the heavy duty drugs? Which have so many side effects. Could you address that? that that's a loaded question. That's a loaded question. Loaded question. <laughs> um, if I could resolve that, I could do the price or it, it, it's um my approach is, is is simply this, and you know, in terms of just my own experience, is first of all, you 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 address the, the the low hanging fruit first. I mean, you make sure that you cover all the bases, um, nutrition, or all those kinds of things, um, and and you layer things, and you you do you do um, trials of, of of different things, and you know uh, things like bergamot, uh, uh, niacin, uh, red yeast rice. All all those things are are helpful in the, in sort of initial stages. If you're not getting anywhere. Or if you, you you need really to get over um, um, uh, uh, to get much farther, then then you you still will have to at some point consider the heavy duty stuff. But mm -hmm. you, but I, when I use the heavy duty stuff, I tell you what I how I use it. Uh, I like for example I like Crestor, uh, Resuvastatin. It, it's strongly anti-inflammatory and it's very effective. And it has sort of a dual pathway of excretion. So that what, what that means is that it's not is it uh, it there's a pathway in terms of both renal and urinating, and and GI or fecal uh, uh, release of, of 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 the products byproducts. Mm -hmm. So that it has a, a, a lower toxicity level. That's good. Um, um, but 
what, what I do is that I, I, when I, when I do, when I use it, you know, I, I sort of laid everything down. Yes, yeah, you may get this, or I may get these muscle problems, and so on and so forth. But I want to see a three or a six month trial. I see what it does. Yes, and then I pull back. That's how I do it. Yes. So yeah. this is this is good because people people do not want to to be taking these heavy duty drugs for a long time. We want to see the you know, you know heart be yeah restored. And I like what you just said. You 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 give people with that with that heart with suffering from heart disease for three months or six months, and then you test them again to see how the drug is working. Because uh, some some people have been taking these drugs for years, and it seems like you you cannot they're not getting any better. What yeah, would yeah. you know? What would you say to that, Doctor Rainford? Yeah. I, 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 and if if, you're, if if there's if there's no change at all, I mean that, that there's nothing clinically. I don't I don't see the point of just throwing the drugs at them, you know. But yes. you, have, you have to really, I mean, I, I you just have to sort of tr tr treat the potential side effects as well. The, the CoQ10, for example, should be given with a good dose of CoQ10. Co yes. And, and all the all the other things, the emphasizing the other things. And I and I'd be remiss if I don't say that the most effective thing um, with his heart disease and, and uh, um, in terms of outcome and so forth is what is at the end of your fork. Yeah. More effective what, than what you're putting in your mouth. Yes. More effective than anything. Yes. There's a, there's a trial, um, I think it's called the PredMed trial done in Mediterranean countries, predominantly uh, uh, Italy and Spain. Um, where the 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 outcome that they had and people who established heart disease and 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 following a, a precise diet is again largely Mediterranean. Um, the result that they have after um, it, it's a I'm going to say I don't remember how many years, but the actual outcome was superior to the statins or any of the statins that, that were available. So life, lifestyle change, diet change, mm -hmm. would make a big difference okay. with I, people with heart disease and also to prevent heart disease. And, and I also want to, want to say is that what the data shows, and, I, and, and a lot of people are not going to like this, and I don't too like it myself, <laughs> um, a plant-based diet is yes. the, the one that has the best outcome. And... Um, and I, because I will tell you, I mean, in all full disclosure, I like my, my rack of lamb. I really do. <laughs> um, but um, it, it's it, what the data is is very very convincing. And and what is even also very interesting now is that there is a there's a version of of the Mediterranean diet known as a, yes yes I heard about that a plant based Mediterranean. Yeah, that that's yes. even, that's even more effective. Yeah, so so so, so describe a little bit about the Mediterranean um, diet for people who are not uh, familiar with it. We, we know. In just a few words, it's really eating with all the different colors, you know, fruits and vegetables. But I will say, I will say this though, is that I prefer vegetables and fruits rather than fruits and vegetables. So. Um, but but you, you, but varying colors, purple, um, um, red, orange, or all different colors. Because you need the polyphenol. The polyphenols, that's the 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 thing that makes makes that fruit or that uh, vegetable what it is in essence. That's really what's at work. It's powerful. Yes, powerful. I, I was I was um, doing a little research on the purple and red, like beets. We know beet right. is very good. Although when I'm telling people, well, my clients, when on their wellness journey, I want to make sure that they are not um, diabetic because I don't want them to take beets, you know, drink beet juice, beet and carrot because it's too sweet. But beet 
anything is red, the strawberries, uh, the, the purple cabbage, anything that is red or purple is good for the heart. Mm -hmm. okay, so you can, you can, and you can vary it. I mean, like you can do, um, there is one of, uh, one of uh, there is a, a um, she's one of the senior um, directors in, in, um, in the Institute for Functional Medicine. Um, I, I'll give you her name uh, again. I'll, uh, Alzheimer's is is, is uh, uh, I'm kicking in. I can't think of her name, but she does. She does. She she does. She she has these little publications from time to time where she, she emphasizes a certain color. Yes. You, you, you eat colors over a period of time, and you just keep way, moving the colors around, and really quite interesting. And. And she has she has these groups where you just join and you join into it. And yes. Yeah. Now, now, what about omega trees? Like in the salmon, uh, the ground flax seed, the hemp seeds, and things like that. That people, you know, all of these are are high in omega trees, mm -hmm. which is good for the heart and the brain. And and and, and which we always tell me the extra virgin olive oil. Right. The the um. Yeah. The, there is actually what, what I want to point out. I want to point out something to you. Um, this there's there's this textbook um, that's called um, Personalized and Precision Integrative Cardiovascular Medicine. I call it up like that. And if you can see the name of the, the, the chief editor, there is Mark Houston. Yes. Okay. Um, Mark Houston is to me the most knowledgeable vascular. Um, um, uh, uh, physician that I know of, and just just, just explaining the, the different the whole putting everything together. Yes, it's a it, it's almost um, it's when when I hear him talk, I sit I just sit down and just and, leave, and my mouth is open. Mm -hmm. um, for example, I, I, mean, I remember I never forget the very first lecture I heard him. Uh, you know, he was pacing the 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 uh, the, 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 uh, the uh, you know at the the podium was, was pacing. And he said, there are 38 steps from the time at which the LDL, that's the bad cholesterol, by the way, yes. becomes oxidized or deformed. And what he means by that, for example, remember, remember way back for everyone, high school oxidation no, and reduction, it's real. Okay. Yes. It becomes oxidized first. And then you know, it becomes rusted, and it, and then it's under that 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 area of uh, as I mentioned of in the, in, under the endothelium, and the inflammation begins, and then the plaque begins as as that inflammation goes. Mm -hmm. um, so he said there are thirty eight steps from that event from the from the ox from the deformity, and by the way, the deformity could also be covered with sugar. Yes, that I, I'm glad you brought that up because people only think of bad fats, yeah. but sugar. Yes, um, and there are 38 steps. He says, and he's and he's this was stepping from the time of the which LDL become deformed, and the time at which the plaque bursts at a heart attack. Jesus, and then he said, every one of those steps potentially can be inhibited by nutrient. I'll never forget that. Repeat that again. <laughs> Repeat every, that. Every one of those steps can be inhibited by a nutrient. So what we put in our mouth could prevent Maybe. heart disease. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I, you know, I think I'm gonna, you know, this is a textbook, and and by the way, for um I, you, you want to mention I have I have a chapter. yes yes you wrote a chapter in that book okay um I um I want to the, the, I would want to give you a, a little I think some, something here about decreasing this is what he says he has a list here decrease LDL modification glycation that's that's oxygen oxidation um glycooxidation acetylation these are all things chemical things that happen to that ldl that causes this mushroom of inflammation this is what he says he has a list niacin egcg that's uh green tea 
catechins, quercetin, resveratrol, red wine. I like that. So all yes, all these things could just could good could, nutrients. Right. You said green tea, resveratrol. Yeah. Right. Um, quercetin. Quercetin. Uh, grapeseed extract. Yes. Um, curcumin. Um, um, uh, then there is a pomegranate, tangerine extract, aged garlic, sesame, uh, gamma or delta tocotrienols, that's, that's vitamin E. Not, it's not the plain vitamin E you go in the store and get. It has to be that mixed uh, uh, tocotrienols. It has uh, gamma, delta, all mixed together. Um, um, glutathione. Glutathione is the master antioxidant. And and that, that, that is one thing I think everybody should be taking. Uh, uh, can you repeat that? that? How do you spell that? G L U T A T H I O N E. Glutathione. And Let me see if I could put it in the G L U T H. T A, then T H. I O N E glutathione. Oh, glutathione. Okay. It's it's um and it's available. You know you can get it in um in a in a what is called a reduced format as a pill, but you can you can also have it liposomal. Um, that was part of my you know I I did not stop for a single day during COVID, but I did miss a day of not taking uh, glutathione. This is good. So this is all, you know, we, proactive. Yeah. Okay. And then there's also citrus, mm -hmm. uh, citrus bergamot, which we know what bergamot, and and it, and it, is, and it, and it ends up and it says and statins. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it's integrative. So he puts everything there. You know, he's, yes. he's very good. He's very good. So all of these things, people could just start on to yeah. to preserve. Because, because that is the key word, that LDL modification. That you, you, yes. So let me repeat it again. Green tea, resolvatrol, gra grapeseed extract, uh, curcumin, aged mm -hmm. garlic, all these things that right here yeah. that we can start taking. Or, and if someone has heart disease, they, they could just start supplementing all the all these uh, different nutrients to help them. Yeah, so yeah. right here, you know, we, we have to be proactive for our health mm -hmm. and uh, and just get rid of the the, the processed foods, the uh, the um, the high uh, high the, what do you call it the oh gosh hydrogenated fats mm -hmm. and put in the good fats right, in right. our body. What about cook one thing coconut oil? Okay, coconut oil. Um, uh, let, let's let, let's do it this way. It's it's sort of a good bad situation. Yes, uh, there 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 is no question that uh, it it helps your HDL, but it also pulls up the LDL as well, the bad cholesterol. Okay, That's downside. The thing that the, 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 to me the the, the biggest. Um, I would say attractiveness to, to uh, uh, cholesterol. I mean, I'm sorry to, uh, to 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 coconut oil is um, when you let's say if you if you want to fry something like you're going to get an egg or what have you, generally it doesn't is not absorbable into the into the into the the actual stuff that you're cooking as 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 well as in a, in a, in a bad sense. It's mm -hmm. being absorbed into the actual product that you're the food itself. Yes. Um, but I, my, I, I will say, you know, my the two that I use and again, and you can uh, draw your own conclusions. Um, it's uh, avocado oil for cooking, mm -hmm. for yes. high, and and, it, and it, it, uh, largely because it. it um, it has a high uh, uh, breakdown point, like 500 degrees. Mm -hmm. you, you, it, you, there is very little breakdown. Because again, a lot of foods are oils because they break down. It's a breakdown that causes the problem. Yes. And, and, and of course, extra virgin uh, olive oil. 
because I, I use it for like sauteing. I, I saute uh, mushrooms and stuff like that, and and uh, and then of using it as as a dressing as well. That's yes. the food that I use most often. Then of course, then I take my omega threes as well. Well, what what role does fiber play in heart disease? Tremendous amount of because while it what it's really doing. You see, cholesterol is, there are different things, there are different pathways. Uh, first, you know, there are things that you may eat that become, that, that's, that's broken down and then put back together and then you, to get like, bad cholesterol and so forth. What fiber does is that it prevents the absorption of a lot of those precursors. Mm. What oat does, like, and, you know, things like that. That's what, it, that's how it works. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, um uh we're, it, the it, it, the fiber doesn't really enter into what the, the liver is where the cholesterol is remade it doesn't get yes. to that point so you you're sort of you're 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 sort of cutting off the supply part is that is that when i tell you it's a supply chain Everybody yes knows. it breaks up the supply chain uh, involves a supply chain early and and that at uh, the absorption end and uh, that's where fiber works Okay, good. Now, earlier, one of the questions I asked was physical inactivity. Mm -hmm. I, I, you know, as a, a trainer and, you know, reading people who are sedentary, who, are, who sit for a long time, they said people who, who sit for a long time is like smoking. Would you address that? Yeah, you yeah. know, exercise because yeah, yeah. it's so important to prevent a, a cardiovascular disease. Could you talk about that a little bit, Dr. Rainford? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, in, in fact, they're saying the, the, the term now is, uh, excuse me, sitting is the new smoking. Have yeah, you heard that term? Yes, okay. yes, yes. Okay. And, and there are some recommendations, and I think... Um, there are 150 hours per week and 75 hours per, depending on the, uh, 150 minutes yes yes yeah. um, I, I i i i think and again it's a personal thing and, it, uh, and i've looked at some of the 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 protocols of different trainers and so forth and and, and looking at some of the the uh, physiology involved i like a mixture of aerobic uh, and resistance and, I, I agree, and and it and it should be, and I will tell you, believe it or not, believe it or not, resistance is more beneficial for the heart than aerobic. So, so you, it's counterintuitive that you know that that um, taking up and um, you know, lifting uh, uh, some weights, weight, uh, strength training with weights, that it's that's more beneficial for the heart than actually walking. Mm -hmm. not. And and in fact, the recommendation is it's a two to one ratio, two of resistance to one of aerobic. Wow. And and the reason it's really this is good to know. This is good to know. It's the hormonal output from from the from the actual uh, uh, physical resistance that that that's beneficial for the heart. So I should encourage my 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 uh, clients to do a little more strength training. Yes. With weights and right. bands, mm -hmm. uh, and simple, uh, maybe doing some planks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all, against the, all, the, all those forms, and and of course, the, and the and the aerobic that they recommend is that is the high intensity interval training uh, method. Yes, and we want to have one hundred and fifty minutes mm -hmm. of moderate to vigorous exercise a week. Yeah. And the good thing about this, you can break it up. Yeah, I, 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 every, I don't think it, I don't think you need to do to exercise every day. It can be yes. every day. Body needs a little time to sort of recover a little. Bit. Yes, yes, because then uh, you know you see some people they they overdo and then it, it could cause uh, sickness. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So now, um, Doctor Rainford, now people who. Do you really believe, you know, well, that heart disease, you know, uh, could be really reversed if people really pay attention to what they're doing and, and change their lifestyle? If, if someone 
has, um, you know, a very bad heart disease, okay? And they said, I want to change my lifestyle. I have sad exercising, doing what you say to do. Do you really believe this could be reversed, that the heart could be repaired? Uh, absolutely. Uh, and I, you know, and I, I think the, the growth, and, and, and the experts know this, I mean, although like, some, some of my colleagues, especially my younger colleagues, don't, uh, don't they're, they're more the interventional, down this, you know, you, you got to stent it. That's how you. That's not how you cure it. Um, the the work from. I mean, let's say go back to Doctor um, uh, uh, Dean Ornish. Um, yes. I mean, he was the first one, I and mean, he actually showed it that 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 you can reverse those uh, blockages by using uh, dietary approaches, and 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 the the, the again also at. Um, uh, at Creek Cleveland Clinic, uh, Dr. Esselstyn, um, he, he, um, his work is also, uh, 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 that has shown it as well. The problem with those two approaches though, that, and I would readily say that those are, the compliance is tough because, you know, zero, zero fat or, you know, are, are the absolute, absolute, you know, um, vegan and nothing else. A lot of people have difficulty with it, but it's getting, I mean, it's getting more popular though. And and, and hence I, I like the term plant-based. Yes. Plant-based gives you the option of, you know, it, gee, if I want to have some fish a day or so, I can have it. It's not it's not as rigid because I read about this man, he was uh grossly obese. Mm-hmm. And you know, the doctor and he was on a lot of uh heart med medications and he went uh for six months he was focused on juicing and all meat out all he got rid of all of his medication because i you know he was uh he, he was going to die so he he made a decision that i am going to just get rid of everything he lost the weight and he got rid of all the medications. But as you're saying, you know, for some people it's very rigid. So they could start with a plant base, the Mediterranean diet. And if they truly have a, a very serious heart disease, they could start with that stuff and progressive, they could go into really maybe vegan because if your life is at stake, you know, you want to do everything mm-hmm. to get healthy and to be whole. Mm-hmm. Yes. And there, and there are a lot of, there are a lot of, I mean, I, I know there's a colleague of mine, he's, he's not a cardiologist who's vegan. Um, he got into, uh, became a vegan basically uh, by, uh, there was a market someplace, he went, he went to West, uh, tour in West Africa and he saw the looking at the meat stuff and he said that's not going in my body and that's how it, that's and I will tell you he but he for him it's so not after but this is someone who's just like you and me and it, that's it he, he it's easy for him but it takes a while to get through that. yes 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 so it, it's quite a discipline and we we really want people to just change their lifestyle we want people to really look at what they put in their mouth because I'm I am surprised that uh, people think that they're eating healthy. Like I, you know, you you visit some people and and they really seriously think that they're eating healthy, and they're not. So we want to educate people. I like what you say: the plant based diet to help them to. Uh, Approach and a low sugar diet because um, a low sugar diet is 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 very good for your heart. But we want to get rid of the sodas. We want to get uh, rid of the high fructose. We want to get rid of uh, these sugary drinks that people think you know. One of the the drinks that um, people buy, they go and they buy juice you know, in a bottle, you know, uh, a smoothie, a juice smoothie. And they're thinking that they drink, they're taking something healthy. And in that bottle of juice 
is about 36 grams of sugar. Mm -hmm. So and, we might... and worse than that, worse than that is because it absorbs very quickly. So it has what is called a high glycemic index. Uh, uh, glycemic index means it has to do with the speed at which what you put in your mouth becomes uh, spikes your blood blood sugar, and things like that, uh, and even for example, uh, something like pasta has a higher glycemic index. So, you know, shoot up that way than sugar itself. Wow. Yeah. Even so, sugar. So, so instead of a uh, pasta, someone should eat a baked sweet potato. Absolutely. That is really very healthy. And it's a nice color too. Yes. High <laughs> in vitamin A. So it's really a lifestyle. As I tell people, it's a lifestyle. We're not talking about the diet. We're not talking about, you know, go, have you go on something rigid, but it's a lifestyle because you want to live long. And for heart disease, we want to go back again and stress. Uh, a low low stress lifestyle, mm -hmm. meditation. Uh, uh, Dr. Rainford, you introduced something and you mentioned something about heart heart math. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, there there is a there is a term that's used that's called coherence. Yes, and coherence has to do with and 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 I, I want to show you. Okay, if you look at you look at my hands now. When you see those EKGs, when you see that, on, on, when you look at the movies, or see, good deal, good deal. Okay, there is a, there's a time difference between that each blip. Okay, it's known as the R to R interval. Yes. Um, and usually, usually with with high stress, because there and, and this is where there there are whether it's uh, cortisol, there are uh, different you know different hormones that cause the, the interval to, to change so that you have this, 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 and it becomes a little, it may, it may seem regular, but it's, it's off a little bit. And mm -hmm. if, you, if you draw a, a graph of the differences, the interval, uh, you know, you will see uh, if somebody in coherence would look like this. Nice, easy waving, nice, easy wave. So it, look, look, again, you can see it's, it's wave, uh, you wave this, I don't know if, I, if people are seeing me, but it, it's yes. a beautiful, you know, um, a wave. Whereas with a non-coherence, uh, there, you know, it's all over the place, and and all of that drives the endothelium mad. Remember that. Always think about that. It's ripping up that carpet. Yes. So, so what you think, even what what you think, uh, the Bible talks about. Whatever things that are good, whatever things that are uh, peaceful, whatever things that are true, as we think of, about these things, these things even mm -hmm. of, affect the heart. Mm -hmm. You know that that's what you taught me with that heart map. Mm -hmm. You 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 could change it. You could change the way of looking at things by whatever things that you that are peaceful, you know, you start thinking of the, the right things, not negatively, it changes your heart of coherence. Because, because and that, that, that's why it's integral to cardiology. Everything is connected. Yes. The gut, the heart, the brain, everything's connected. And they talk to each other. Hmm. I like that. Yeah. I like that. So, as we, we, anything that you would like to share as we close, Dr. Rainford? Um, I, I think we, are, we covered most things, just about everything. I, you know, that's, uh, it, again, it's, it's really, I, I would say this um, from what we have gone over, it sounds like a lot of things, but the way to implement this is to take one thing, just take one thing at a time and just start there start to implement one yes. thing. Yes, and we and we heard a lot about the, the good nutrients to, to put in our body, mm -hmm. the plant the plant based Mediterranean mm -hmm. uh, diet, uh, get activity going and yet, and also 
meditation. You mentioned when we first uh, began our conversation, you said people who go to church are healthier because it takes time to me for meditation. It affects the heart. So everything is coming together. Now, doc Dr. Rainford, um, before we close, could you share some of your information if someone wants to contact you or they want to come and visit you? I know that um, you work at the Good Samaritan Hospital in Suffern, and also you did you do your functional medicine at Advanced Wellness in Valley Cottage. But anything else you would want to share with the audience that they could contact you? I, I, honestly, there are really two things. Um, but perhaps the easiest is is coming through Good Samaritan first, and you know, and by that I mean it's a lot of the things that I do there are are access to are things that that are, that one would sort of expect from a cardiologist, and then once I sort of process that, then uh, then I move on to the functional aspect approach to it, and and I but I give both numbers. Uh, uh, Good Samaritan Hospital is uh, 845 777 3501. And, uh, and the uh, um, address wellness where I do the, the, the uh, multifunction cardiogram and these exercises and so forth is 845 200 3345. Okay. And thank you. Thank you, Dr. Rainford, for coming on and sharing so much. I, I wish we had even more time because you, what I love about you is that you are very detailed. When, when Ken and I come to your office, you take, you, you don't just rush us through. You take time with us and you explain everything about our cardiovascular system. So I really want to thank you for taking time to come on and share with the audience how to prevent heart disease. And if you do have heart disease, what, what you know, there are some things that you could do and they could even contact you. Okay, and Julia, really, I also want to thank you for being a wonderful host. Uh, for inviting me to do this, and I and I really enjoy this. You're welcome because my the whole thing about one, you know, I want to see people healthy and fit, and I believe that is what God wants. He wants people whole, so we do not have an untimely death. We want to prevention is better than a uh, an ounce of prevention is a better than a pound of care. So um, thank you for joining us and. Next month, we're going to be doing a, a segment on mental health. Um, Tracy Gonzalez, a licensed clinical social worker, she's going to be talking about mental health. So tune in. Once a month, we have this conversation. The whole thing is to help you to become whole. And right now, um, I am doing a 30 days of wellness for greatness. Every day I'm sharing five things on Facebook. Meditation, infused scripture meditation, hydration, nutrition. We talk about what, what to, we put in our mouth affects our cardiovascular health. So we, uh, I talk about, I, I give a recipe every day. Exercise, the importance of exercise. Uh, Dr. Rainford talk about 150 minutes of moderate to uh, vigorous exercise, and we, 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 uh, he discussed the importance of, about resistant training. So I, I, I address that and the affirmations, the power for uh, what we are saying with our mouth because it affects our health. So join me in this challenge, and I thank you for joining joining us today. And I know that you took away some good things. And once you, you, you are responsible for what you hear. So thank you and have a great evening. See you next month. God bless. Okay. Thank you. Okay.